What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Gio, and this is my GBA Season 7 post draft analysis for you guys. I'm going to go over uh, the Mons I drafted this season, why I drafted them, uh, my thought process going into the draft, kind of how I draft. Like, I want this to not only be an introduction to my team, but also uh, maybe a little bit of a lesson for people who are still new to the draft system, want some tips on the draft system for how we do it in the GBA and uh, other of the, the competitive draft leagues in the format so um i didn't have an intro slide <laughs> i should have probably done that but let's just start off right away uh spoiler alert my first pick was tapu fini i had a really early pick in the draft um originally i was hoping i was going to be able to get tapu lele uh but uh, it got um it got banned which is fine actually a lot of the when when it first came to discussing the opening pick i said i want something supremely powerful something hard to switch into something that entire teams get built opponents teams get built around uh, so i was thinking things like victini kiram black tapu lele zirka tree um tapu coco um or Faramosa. now a lot of those got banned and then other ones when you start looking at the team you have to build around it theorizing in an open draft format that changed things a little bit so the reason i went with tapu fini is i like having on my team one of the single most reliable defoggers that you can have in the format tapu fini matches up so well against anything that's passive because of its access to taunt it's pretty fast um 85 speed it's really defensive 130 in the special defense 115 in defense uh hp 70 that's workable for defenses like that it's actually defensively one of the things that's really interesting about it. it's basically ferrothorn but you flip the defensive stats they're really similar stat wise and people know how hard it is to kill ferrothorn ferrothorn has great typing tapu fini has amazing typing water Fairy is just astronomically good typing, and I really wanted to play around with a Tapu this time. Um, I was considering Bulu, but I wanted to start out with... Uh, I feel like with Bulu, his typing is pretty poor, and you spend the rest of the game trying to catch up to it, and I didn't really like its... I don't really like grassy terrain all that much, so I wanted to build instead around a terrain that i really liked and uh that's one of the beauties of of some of the the tapus so uh, i picked up feeny really early pick and i'm i'm proud of feeny feeny is going to be nicknamed moana uh i should have probably led with that moana the feeny so let's go on to my second pick following up the tapu feeny um i wanted more i wanted to keep building it was still really early in the pick or in, in the draft and I already had a fairy. Um, in this meta, right now for season seven, steals are really important and fairies are really important. Um, it's just sort of blown up that way. Um, but what I wanted for for my next pick was something that was very versatile in the roles it could fill. And so I ended up going with Salamence. Salamence was really, really powerful in the last couple of seasons it's done great things for teams it can run an amazing support set uh, with access to wish it has roost it has defog but also it's one of the more threatening sweepers in the game um, at the time that i selected this i wasn't entirely sure how the rest of the draft would go uh, i noticed that it hadn't gone yet and i knew it was bound to go soon so i had to pick it up round two this is where sort of a learning element comes in. I was positioned towards one of the outsides of the draft. So I had, I didn't have a, in the truest sense of the word, I didn't have a wheel pick, but I sort of did because there was only about four picks going each direction on the outside of me. So eight picks be before I got another pick as opposed to uh, at the end of, of round three, I'll have to wait until round four, something like 24 picks or, or something like that. I forget exactly. Uh, I haven't done the math, <laughs> but um, and I probably could. It wouldn't be that hard. But Salamence, I had a pretty good feeling that it was going to go before 
I would have made it back on my wheel pick, which is why I had to pick it up uh, round two. The next thing I noticed at this point in the draft was that a lot of other... You sort of, you have to analyze what your opponents are picking to know when to get the value out of a Mon. Because picking a Mon in round 9 that should have gone in round 3, that's just oversight. But picking a Mon in round 3 that maybe is not considered to be a round 3 Mon, what dictates whether or not a Mon is valuable in the tier it's at is whether or not it will go yet. So the more you snipe people, the more people say like, oh, I was about to pick that, the more you know you picked a Mon at the right time. So Mints, I got a lot of calls. Um, uh, we're, we're in our own little chat during the draft while it's going on. So uh, each time a pick gets announced, you know, you get a little, you get a little, uh, little discussion from the coaches. So people wanted Mints. Uh, so I feel like I drafted it at the right time. Even in a pretty anti-dragon meta, Salamence is still huge in the format. So he's got he's got a flying typing, which is is going to be useful in the scheme of things. It's always useful to have some immunities. Uh, and I really wanted a dragon. I wanted a good dragon. I wanted good base stats. And so that's where Salamence came in. My third pick was because I picked uh, Arcanine, who's going to be nicknamed Fresh. By the way, the Salamence is going to be nicknamed uh, Madments. So, Fresh the Arcanine. Arcanine is actually my channel mascot, which is kind of funny because everybody starts, uh... Everybody associates me with Entei because I've drafted it so much and because it's my team mascot. But before I was in the GBA, my channel mascot was actually Fresh, uh, the Arcanine. So, uh, and there's several other coaches for whom Arcanine is actually the mascot. So, it's sort of funny how that went. Um, I saw when I drafted this in the GBA Discord chat, a lot of people sort of surprised that uh, I didn't pick up Entei again. But there was also several people who were saying that Arcanine is better than Entei in the format. Now, the thing is that's most interesting about them is that they're they're really similar Pokemon, but they're very different in how they're in how they're used. Entei, um, I really liked Entei on my season 5 team I really wanted to keep him because of how strong I felt he was uh, he got moved up in the tier and some people would say that's because of me I don't think that's true I think we are constantly analyzing and trying to balance the league um, as best as possible as a collective with the coaches so I recognized that he was powerful I drafted him as my um, What's it called when you do it again? Ah, man, I'm forgetting the term for it. Um, when we we pick up the same Pokemon a second time, uh, if you've had it the season before, franchise. Why did I not be? <laughs> uh, I picked it up as a franchise pick, so it cost a little bit extra. But I really wanted the Entei that season, and I was hoping to be able to build a little bit around it. The problem became that. It didn't shine on the team that I brought. Uh, it was pretty easy to counter, and I wasn't able to find ways to make unique sets because it didn't. A lot of my other Pokemon didn't deal with Entei's issues enough, so Entei became this uh, Pokemon I used more as this blatant middle ground high damage pick, and anything could have done that. Uh, you know, it doesn't need to be an Entei at that point. I ran it Choice Banded a lot. Not exclusively Choice Banded, but for the build that my team had last season, it didn't really make sense. And so looking at that, and looking at what I had on the team so far, I was worried that I might end up getting drawn into that role again. So I couldn't pick Entei. Arcanine, the reason I picked it is, again, look at what I have so far, and my mentality this season is... You gotta prep for things in more than one way. Arcanine can be a great defensive mon, however, it's also a very powerful offensive mon. Um, between Flash Fire and Intimidate, it finds decent ways to switch in and immediately put on counter pressure, which is something Entei doesn't do quite as well. Entei runs the risk of coming in and not creating a situation for itself in which it can devastate its opponent. Arcanine has slightly better move pool, um, 
specifically in Wild Charge, which is huge for taking out bulky waters, which is something that uh, Arcanine really struggled to do. I was able to do it in a couple of sets, like the Caliente set in Season 5, and the um, Natural Power, uh, Lechi Berry, I think, Grass, right? Yeah, to take out um, Miguel's Blastoise in Season 6, and I... I it's you gotta really prep for that though like you gotta know that that's their only answer to them on and it, this time around it felt like arcanine was the better pick entei was still available but multiple fires had started going and in the draft format you have to recognize a rush when you see one and you have to decide whether or not you're okay to forego um a high tier or a, a highly sought after pokemon in order to take it later on. Like, if I didn't really care about having a decent fire type, I could have let Arcanine go. He almost certainly would have gone. Entei would have gone. Salazzle was still around. Salazzle would have gone. Darmanitan was still around. Darmanitan would have gone. And then what am I left with? I could get, you know, whatever. Uh, in Season 4, I ended up picking, picking Moltres, uh, which actually did surprisingly well in the format. Um, I would, if you guys have a team that you're building around and you feel really confident about your ability to keep hazards off the field, Moltres is actually really powerful, and I did very well with Moltres considering how low of a pick it was. However, that just illustrates the point. This is a, a last minute pick that requires a lot of help to be what it wants to be, which is a fire type offensive Pokemon. I wanted to pick up a good one that fit for the team. Arcanine did that. He's really well rounded uh, stat wise. Decent base stat total, good speed, can be a defensive mon, can be an offensive mon, can hit on both sides, and it got a few new tricks and toys this season, which I'm looking forward to using. Uh, fourth pick, had to wait a long time for this pick, and when it came back around, I had to grab it. Um, I really wanted some high power, but again, I don't ever want to stray on the early picks from having bulk. Glass cannons are... A liability in the draft format and so I didn't want to go with any of those yet so I picked up Conkelder. Super super powerful, incredible move pool, um, bulky because it's got high HP, it's got decent defense. Um, the stats are just really not wasted on this Pokemon. The things it has low are speed, that's fine because it actually still outspeeds a lot of the true walls. Um, bulky middle ground um, tanks and stuff yeah, maybe it doesn't outspeed that, but it really doesn't need to. It's got such a high attack stat. It's got three great abilities in Guts, Sheer Force, and Iron Fist, which can adapt to any situation based on kind of what you need to bring for that week. Um, Life Orb Sheer Force with the elemental punches is insane. It's got uh, Iron Fist if you want to run sets and keep the potential to have those secondary effects. Um, I mean, really, Sheer Force is ideal on this Pokemon when you're pairing it with a Life Orb to allow you to have that extra power without having the, the unfortunate side effect of taking the Life Orb recoil. It, that's why it's really strong. However, if you're looking at choice sets, ten, generally speaking, Sheer Force is inferior to Iron Fist. I guess it kind of depends on the what you need to bring, but generally speaking, I, I feel it's that way. And then Guts. Guts is interesting. A lot of people were saying, um, you brought a Gutsmon with Tapu Fini who heads up Misty Terrain which is makes you immune to status effects. You're looking at this wrong. You're looking at this like I'm building a team that can avoid status because of Tapu Fini and that's not true. Tapu Fini's setup lasts for five turns. I'm not trying to switch in Tapu Fini to every possible. I might not even bring Tapu Fini every week. This is a free draft. I'm going to be getting a lot of power not just early round power. Tapu Fini might sometimes not have the ability to set up Misty Terrain, and I might be liable if I don't bring something to help me deal with status. Conkelder discourages toxic spikes, it discourages people popping toxic on my walls, it discourages people throwing out willows. It's having guts can really make the opponent fear to use status on top of the fact that Tapu Fini discourages it already. It makes my team significantly more resilient to status. Significantly more resilient. 
King Kelder is also very slow, which I can play with. Sometimes being slow can be an advantage. So you need disparity in your speed tiers. I didn't have that last season. It made it really easy to build against me. I know that for a fact because a lot of the way that I team build is by building against myself first and then sort of running Calyx and, and looking at this series of things from that. King Kelder's nickname is going to be Dumbledore. A uh, little Harry Potter reference. I think it is a quirky play on, on words a little bit, so I like that one. My fifth pick is Ferrothorn. Like I said earlier, guys, Tapu Fini and Ferrothorn have really similar stats, and they function in a really similar way. They can come in, um, and then they can gain a lot of momentum by either forcing out opponents that they wall incredibly well, which is something Ferrothorn can do really well. Um, it also gave me a much needed rocker, really reliable rocker. Someone to spread status, uh, it has access to Toxic and to uh, T-Wave, which is good. I didn't have that on my team thus far. It has a great capacity to deal with frail physical attackers thanks to its Iron Barbs and Rocky Helmet uh, combo that it can run. I needed a steal, it helps fill finish off both my Dragon Fairy Steel Core and my Firewater Grass Core just in my fifth pick. It's relatively underutilized in the meta, largely because uh, in the draft meta, and largely because it's uh, four times weak to fire. However, I am ridiculously resilient to fire at this point in my draft. You look at this, I got Feeny, resists it. Salamence, resists it. Arcanine, resists it. Fire types are not a problem for my team. Packing Hidden Power Fire is fine, but you have to remember with Hidden, power f with hidden Powers is that you need those to navigate around certain specific threats. Ferrothorn is threatening and sometimes hard to kill, but it's a wall and it's supposed to be, so packing HP fire for that means you potentially don't have answers to really great offensive threats. You might need HP ice to stop a Salamence. Uh, if you've got a fast special attacker, that might be your only way to stop it sometimes, uh, once it gets a little late in the match or something like that, in which case you don't pack it for Ferrothorn. It puts a hard decision in my opponent's head. I've had Ferrothorn on a team before, it was a team that did not like Ferrothorn being on it. It had very few walls and none of them had reliable recovery. This was my season 4 team. I literally never brought it and then I traded it. And the Pokemon I traded it for didn't fit on the team either. It just, I needed to get rid of it. It didn't fit on my season 14. It fits incredibly well on this team. If you look at the top 5 Pokemon, they are in and of themselves a really strong team that has pretty much everything you need on a team. It's got a lot of priority. It's got speed. It's got bulk, it's got defog, it's got hazards, walls uh, on all over the place, but offensive options too. I was really happy with how my team was at this point in the draft. So then um, I had a long wait before my next pick. Coming back around, the thing that I felt like I needed more was reliable special attackers. Now, Finny is not a bad special attacker. 95 special attack is it's not poor, but it's below average as far as being a special attacker is concerned. Arcanine uh, has 100 special attack, Salamence has 110, but they're both more known for their physical sets. Uh, that's the higher stat. Kinkelder has nothing for a thorn, uh, more of a physical offensive presence. But looking at this right now, I wanted a special attacker. Um, I wanted it to be fast, and I wanted it to hit really hard, and so I ended up going with Gengar. Um, my Ferrothorn nickname, by the way, was is Robocrop, which I, I really like that. Uh, Gengar nickname is going to be Genghis Gar, and Genghis Gar, uh, what can I say about this? I was really contemplating Azelf in this slot, and the reason I ended up going against it, I, for a long time, I was like, I really stood by Azelf as being the right pick in this scenario, but the reason we, um, from what we saw, me and my friend who, my front officer, the reason we ended up going with Gengar is that at the time we wanted a second rocker and so we thought maybe Azelf is a good option because it does that and it's a special attacker. However, that's kind of a problem because what I needed now is not more Mon that can do everything. It's Mons who do have diversity in their build but 
retain a similar role. Gengar can be a wall breaker really effectively with sub disable, but it's also got really, really strong stabs. So it's a very reliable mid game uh, special attack sweeper. And it can be really devastating at that role. It's really hard to switch into its dual stab. I know it lost Levitate, and that makes it significantly worse if we're being honest here, but it is still. It's still a very serious threat. It's very fast, it's 110 speed, which is great to add to the team. Get a little more speed in there, get some speed diversity. At this point, no two of my Mon have the same speed, which I really like, because last season by this point, I had three Mons with base speed 100. It's... Uh, at, at timid nature, max speed, it actually outspeeds Weavile, which is something really interesting. That's not true for all 20 speed disparities, but it is speed for this, it is true for this one, so... Uh, I really like that. Um, don't quote my numbers there. I think I don't actually think it's there. It's 125, right? 15 speed disparity. So that's huge, and that's at both level 50 and 100. So I thought that its its speed is very an important factor of it. It's very powerful on the special offensive side, and it's very frail. But I'm okay with that. I'm willing to have that. It's a spin blocker that takes on a lot of rapid spinners. Um, Starmie isn't safe. Uh, Fortress isn't safe. Serena isn't safe. Kamala isn't safe. Like a lot of these mons don't match up well against it. Some of the rapid spin mons that are coming into prevalence in this meta. Unfortunately, having lost Levitate, um, Dawn fans a little bit better against it, but still really powerful. I'm really excited to use Genghis Gar this season. Uh, it's been, it's kind of a nightmare to actually prepare against, and there's a lot of bulky psychics in the meta, so uh, I'm really excited to have it this time. Seventh pick, we're looping back around here. I'm looking at my team. As I said before, part of the reason I was considering Azov is because I wanted another rocker. Uh, looking at what I had so far, I didn't feel great against uh, offensive ground types, uh, and more specifically edge quake combo. So I wanted something that's really good against that, that is a stealth rocker, and so I ended up going with Bronzong. Now statistically Bronzong as kind of a mixed wall is without reliable co recovery is once again pretty similar to Ferrothorn in that regard, however Bronzong does something a little bit different. It's a trick room setter, and I do have some slow speeded mons on here, and under trick room, some of those mons can be really devastating. So it's a good trick room option for me. Um, in addition to that, Bronzong is a really fun lead to play with. It has um, heat proof and levitate, which are both really interesting options on the mon and I'm really excited to have that as the as something that I can play around with it's got trick it's got a lot of weird tricksy things you have to prepare for hypnosis uh, which is really useful it can hit pretty hard with heavy slam uh, obviously gyro ball because it's really slow its move pool is better than people give it credit for but it's a really reliable stealth rocker, really reliable. Potentially more reliable than Ferrothorn because there's not many mons that have the capacity to Oko it. It doesn't have any four times resistances or four times weaknesses. And the two of the things that it's weak to, if you can detect that on your opponent's side, what they're going to be, what they're going to be, you can bring the ability for that. Um, obviously, also it has explosion, so uh, not going <laughs> to not going to complain about that one. Um, offensively, it's it's somewhat lacking. It's slightly passive, but it can be a really annoying mon to try and prevent from setting up stealth rocks, and it can do that pretty reliably. So uh, I'm excited to use it and to uh, give myself more steals and to take away steal options from uh, my opponents. Also, that's sort of what I was looking at when I made this pick, and so I think that'll I think it'll mix well with the team. And part of the reason I picked it was because the steel pool was slowly depleting and I felt like it wouldn't have been an option a little bit later and there weren't really any other stealth rock mons mons that are known for their ability to be hazard setters that I really wanted in that slot 
moving on, I had noticed that a lot of the electric types had started to go in these middle tiers. They weren't, not a lot of them were picked really early. Um, Bronzong, I don't have a nickname for yet. Uh, I have a few ideas, but when it comes on game days, you'll, you can, I'll have a nickname for it then and I'll introduce it then. Uh, same with the next pick. Don't have a nickname for it yet, but I ended up going with Heliolisk. Now, Heliolisk, I was very excited for, um, I've seen it used in the format before and one of the things about Heliolisk, pretty fast, interesting speed tier that that can be really well utilized uh, because it again doesn't match with some of my other mods. Its special attack is high but not super high but it has incredible typing, no sorry not incredible typing, its typing is eh, it's not great. I, I was a little ghost weak uh, with my last couple of picks, um, Bronzong and Gengar both being weak to ghost. So it helps to have the normal typing, but that's not really why I picked it. I picked it because it, its abilities are incredible. Uh, high weather meta right now, so having um, the extra power from solar power is useful. Having sand veil is cool, a cool option. Dry skin to give me um, a new immunity i i really like all those things i i really do like that it has that and also have you seen the move pool on this thing it is incredible uh, water coverage on a on an electric mon is really really cool it's got dark pulse um which is i guess not super uncommon on electric types but i i just i really like its coverage options it's fast pretty fast and a lot of the other really fast electric mons had started going um, it's fast without sacrificing too much in the special attack realm. It's brittle, but I think that's okay. So I, I was excited to try Heliolisk um, this season. I, I really wanted an electric type Mon. I really wanted some momentum grabbing capacity, so I grabbed that one. And then moving on, I wanted... I kind of wanted a Cleric. And so I ended up going with Umbreon. Umbreon, I think, will fit this role incredibly well mainly because of how well it pairs with Feeny. They cover each other really effectively. Um, Feeny being primarily weak to Mons, specific Mons. Don't look so much at the typing, although that is useful. Umbreon being weak to um, fighting type, which Feeny, of course, resists. But don't you don't need to look so much at that. You gotta look at what Umbreon can handle that Finny can't and it's it's pretty massive actually if you look at it that way but more importantly the wish passing capacity to a lot of my other mons uh, who are lacking reliable recovery is huge it's a great pairing with Bronzong it's a great pairing with Ferrothorn it's a great pairing with Tapu Fini because of the wish uh, the ability to wish pass and uh, also serves as a cleric just in case I need one, in case Finny's not coming, I feel like my team might be a little weak to status. Baton Pass, another Momentum Grabber. Uh, it's very bulky. Really, really bulky. 95 HP, 110 defense, and 130 in the special defense. So I am very specially defensive on this team at the, at the moment. So, um, excited for Umbreon. Um, don't have a nickname for it yet either. My 10th pick, we're getting to the very bare bones of the draft here. I wanted more speed. And I wanted another Stealth Rocker, and I was thinking, how am I going to do that in my last two picks? Well, I'll just do it in one. Uh, and I went with Aerodactyl. Uh, it's one of the better Rock Stab Offensive Mon in the game, as far as I'm concerned. So it's nice to have that as an option for it. It's another Stealth Rocker, so I can be really diverse with my hazards this game. I've got Spikes on Ferrothorn, but I've also got it as a Stealth Rocker. Bronzong as another Stealth Rocker. Aerodactyl... Uh, as a blazing fast stealth rocker so it can outpace some of the taunt mons that might be led um, against the hazard war leads uh, that are kind of prevalent in the draft league format. Um, I was considering for this position because I also really liked the typing that it gave me. Again, it's another Pokemon that resists Edge Quake, and that's actually something that's really important. A lot of people miss that when building their teams. There's a lot of um, building for typing that happens in the draft format. A lot of people pick up high resistances uh, to as many things as they can and don't even really realize a lot of teams end up becoming very weak to Edge Quake as a combo. 
Uh, they think, oh look, I have a lot of rock resists, I have a lot of ground resists, but it's very rare that teams are built to resist both. And it can be a really big issue. Aerodactyl does that. Um, doesn't, I mean, it doesn't resist rock because it's part flying, but it takes on a lot of edge quake um, opponents, which is kind of nice. So, Aerodactyl here, uh, blazing fast, 130. I wanted something really up there, outpacing a lot of the threats, and 130 does that very effectively. 105 attack is respectable. It's a good rock type mon. Um, its coverage is pretty decent. Uh, it's another uh, defogger in theory. Uh, I guess it, it could be that if I'm running really support set on it, but it's a great sash lead. Um, it's a great uh, choice bander. Hone claws sets sometimes can pick up surprise kill stuff like that. So I, I'm excited for Aerodactyl. Um, uh, it's going to be nicknamed uh, Aerostotl. And then finally, returning once again from season four is Gyarados, who is going to be nicknamed Glados. Gyarados. I was so surprised it made it to this round. Gyarados is a devastating setup sweeper. Uh, Dragon Dance Gyarados is actually really popular in the meta right now. Usually it's as Mega Gyarados, but it doesn't need to be. It's one of those mons that's almost as effective not in its Mega form as it is in its Mega form. It's another uh, ground resist for my team. It's another fighting resist for my team. It's even more Intimidate. It actually felt like it fits really well uh, on the team. It's a four times weakness to electric, but I, if you're really bringing hidden power electric out of fear for Gyarados when my team is so not weak to electric, I, I'm surprised, to be honest. I, I will I will tell you right now that I'm, I'm pretty surprised about that as a, as a bring option. So that's my full draft, guys. That's Tapu Fini, Moana, Salamence, Madmence, Arcanine, Fresh, Kinkelder, Dumbledore, Ferrothorn, the Robocrop, Gengar, Genghisgar, Bronzong, Heliolisk, Embryon, um, Eros, yeah, Aristotle, the Aerodactyl, and GLaDOS, the Gyarados. So, what do you guys think of the draft? I think it's, uh, I think it's really threatening. Honestly, <laughs> I think it's interesting. I kind of, I do prefer the tier draft format to free draft, but I think in this free draft format, I think a lot of what I did was pick up threats right as they were looking to be taken. Um, looking back at the draft, sometimes your moves get a little pressured. My round seven pick, Bronzong, is what I consider to be my weakest pick personally. Not because I didn't want Bronzong, I didn't want it yet, and part of how I came to picking it was because so many other Mon I wanted um, in How do, how do I word this? I got sniped a lot in the mid game. Uh, early on, I felt like I was doing a lot of sniping, and then later on, I would I would get my eye on something, and I really didn't think it would go, and it, it they just kept getting like someone had the same wavelength as me, and it would get it would get picked up, and it was really sad to see a lot of those mons gone. Most notably, Staraptor. I really wanted Staraptor. I wanted it so badly, and it didn't end up going. And part of the reason I got Bronzong also. Uh, is because I wanted something that would counteract burb spam. Uh, Ferrothorn, unfortunately, being part grass, is actually not resistant to flying. And while I do have a really strong defensive team here, um, powerful flying types were actually a problem. At the time that I was drafting, I didn't know whether or not uh, Talonflame would still go. Talonflame, of course, taking a pretty big nerf. Uh, with the loss of Gale Wings being as strong as it once was, but it's still a really dangerous Pokemon and strong in the format, so I, I didn't know if it was going to go or not. Staraptor had just gone, and so part of the another part of the reason I wanted to get Staraptor is because, and it's not because of the Intimidate, I know it also has Intimidate, but it's just so strong uh, that it can really tear through teams. I, I had to prep against it several several times in the past couple of seasons and it's just very very difficult to deal with actually and so having another answer that's kind of why i felt forced to get bronzong a little bit after staraptor went and i kept getting i was like okay well i'll get this instead picked uh well okay well i'll get this instead picked and it happened too frequently but that was where i considered to be the weak point i didn't want it when i got it but i think it would have gone if i didn't grab it there 
and I felt like it's something I could have let go if I'd gotten what I wanted in round seven, but I didn't. So I sort of, I played off it from that um, and sort of made the move thereafter. Round eight was the same way. Uh, Bronzong and Gengar kind of, I mean, they're a paired pick, so I, I picked it after. I was like, well, I'll get Gengar now, but I would have picked in round seven what had gone prior to round six. Again, that's the nature of the wheel. I'm not true wheel, but I was close enough to it that it felt like that was one of my picks. So uh, looking at my team, uh, stat-wise, things you can see, my highest stats are my attack stat. It's very high. and The lowest attack stat I have is Heliolisk at 55. Gengar and Umbreon are both 65, but then after that, everything is pretty high attack. Talbofini also 75, but I got Salamence at 135, Arcanine at 110, Conkelder at 140, Aerodactyl 105, like even Ferrothorn is at 94. Ferrothorn, don't sleep on an offensive Ferrothorn, guys, I'm telling you. I've got really high uh, special defense also, I'm very specially defensive. Uh, between Topofini at 130, Ferrothorn at 116, Bronzong at 116, Umbreon at 130, and even Gyarados. Gyarados will surprise you guys, but he's 100 special defense also with 95 HP. Bulky Gyar, it's a real thing, it's a real threat. I got a lot of Mon that can do that, can sort of sort back and forth, but please let me know in the comment section what you guys thought of the draft. I'm excited to use this one, it's a little bit different than what I've used. Uh, last season, it's sort of a mid-ground thing between my Season 4 and Season 5 team. I really liked my Season 5 team. I could not stand my Season 4 team. But I think the things about my Season 4 team that ended up working out well for me, I retained um, and got rid of a lot of the weaknesses of it. So, excited to use it uh, this season and excited to see where it goes. So, let me know in the comment section if you saw things that you thought I could have done differently during the draft. Uh, were you guys live watching it? Because uh, it was fun to be a part of. I tried to chat with you guys a little bit in the Discord channel, but uh, my mind was a little preoccupied. <laughs> during the draft so as always my name is Jim Leader Geo you guys are the challengers thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time